<laughs> well, Jared, I mean, this was, uh, this was always a big fight from the moment it got announced, right? But now, co-main event, a pay-per-view, I mean, big time. I, I don't know, does this have a special feel about it? Yes, it does, definitely. Uh, super excited. Eyes are on us. And I think, um, you know, I think we are the, uh, the true main event right now. You know, not, not to take anything away from the, the main event, but, uh, you know, those guys are really stoic. And, uh, you know, I'm not the, the most charismatic person at times, but, you know, Patty sure is. And uh, I think it's going to be a great fight. Super excited. Can't wait to get in there. Talk about the build-up for this one, because Jared's been very respectful of you. You know, he says he's kind of a fan of you. He's like, he's not a hype train, you know, he's the real deal. What, what have you made of, you know, the way he's treating you ahead of time? I really like Jared, you know what I mean? We've got a mutual respect for each other. I, I think he's an amazing human being. What he's come back back through throughout his life, he's turned his life around. He's such an inspirational and motivational person. Like, I, I've got the utmost respect for him. I, I really have. I think he's a very nice, genuine dude. I seen him yesterday and he come over and give me a hug, lad. Come on, give me a hug and shook me hand and he put on line uh, he's got very soft hands and people were giving him shit over it, saying like why did you uh, didn't say that into his face. I didn't take it like that. I have got very soft hands. You know what I mean? And I don't use moisturizer. I have got soft hands. It's me knuckles what you've got to worry about. What do you make of him as a fighter? I mean, does he present any unique challenges that maybe you haven't seen before? Um no. I don't think he does. No disrespect to him, like, but I, I don't think he does. You know what I mean? I think Jordan Levitt's a better grappler. I think Luigi Vendramini's a better striker. And I'm bigger than him. I've got more reach. Like, one thing that did piss me off was he said, I'm a quitter. I've never quit. I've been choked unconscious and went five rounds twice against two steroid abusers when I went into both of them fights injured. You know what I mean? He's the quitter. He tapped to a choke recently, what wasn't even fully on. Like, that wasn't even a proper re choke against an opponent who was absolutely dog shit. So, you know. What do you make of that? I mean, I would say he's a charismatic dude, right? He brings a lot of attention. You, you kind of blue collar grinding in the shadows or whatever. So, I mean, what do you think facing a guy like this, boisterous like this? I think it's great, man. I think he's great for the sport. Uh, I like him. I liked him from the start. Even before UFC, when he was in Cage Warriors, and um, you know, to get a chance to get in there with someone like him, you know, I put myself right in this position to be in this moment. Everything that I did, I walked left, I walked right, I lost, I won, and it led me right here. So um, it's just an opportunity that I have to seize, just like anything else in life, and that's what I'm going to do. Have you felt like a responsibility, I guess, to maybe come out of your shell a little bit or whatever, or to kind of be a little more out there in this role, in this fight? Uh, not necessarily. People don't really know me that well, I don't think. Um, if you, like, hung out with me for a couple hours, you'd be like, this is not who, uh, you know, we think he is. But, you know, I have a responsibility to, you know, set a good example, I think. So, but... You know, I could be fun, too. Last thing for me, Patty. I mean, a win here, obviously, all eyes are on you, big spot. How fast do you want this thing to go to the top of the division? I mean, I think now people are taking you real, you know. Do, are you ready for contenders? They're not, though. They're not. It's cheeky, lad. People still aren't taking me for real. You know what I mean? No one respects me, and it, it does piss me off. But, um, you know, I've just got to get on with that, lad. People don't respect the come-up. Simple as. Patty, do you think... You know, we sometimes we talk about fighters having their breakout moment, right? Oh, that's this is going to be this fight. This fight's going to be my breakout performance. Because every one of my past opponents, people are like, oh, he's not good, he's not good. I personally think my best opponent was my debut, Luigi Vendramini. He gets a bad rap, lad. You know what I mean? The only fights he lost, he lost the majority decision to Faraz Zian. He's also pony-like. Um, he lost his debut at welterweight, and then I beat him. But that's me. You know what I mean? People say, oh, because he got cut. Yeah, Vargas wasn't the best. Like, he wasn't. Jordan Levitt, very good. No one had ever finished him. Everyone was talking about Claudio Puelles. Ooh, he's fucking shit as well. You know what I mean? And he couldn't finish him. But everyone was saying that he'd beat me. And I went and finished Levitt on, on, on one of my worst nights when I turned up with a lot of shit going on behind the scenes. And I still finished him in the second round, lad. 
and I'm disappointed in that performance, just like I was the Vargas one. I don't think I've put a good performance in since my debut, and that wasn't even that good. But this is going to be my breakout performance. People are going to see the improvements I've made over the past 15 months since I signed with the UFC. Like, you're you going to see. In fighting, often we see these guys who are able to bring people with them, right? The traveling crowd. I know, like, December's not necessarily the best time. People are saving money for Christmas. No, it's you, not. Are you expecting some scouts? Oh, of course, yeah. I've, I've sold a good few tickets myself. Got tickets for me mates, obviously, it goes without saying. Um, but it's not even just that, lad. I'm, I'm fighting in America, and I know full well Jared's going to get booed, and I'm going to get cheered. That's a fact. Like, it, it just is. It's going to be mad for him, lad, because I think he might think he might get a good cheer and that, but when he's standing in that cage and everyone's singing, oh, Paddy the Baddy, his ass is going to fall out of him. Paddy, just here to your right. Um, news came out the other day that you launched your own foundation. Uh, can you kind of talk about that? I know he's kind of targeted to your local area at the minute, but I'm sure it's something you want to like expand throughout England as well. Yeah, it's not just targeting me local area, lad. It's just helping kids in general like get fed. The amount of kids, what you're hearing nowadays, what a on the bread line and are struggling to get food. You know, I'm just trying to help any way I can, just like people like Marcus Rashford have done the same in the UK. And then, like I said that in March, and people are saying, oh, he's just saying that, he's just saying that. Well, what now, lad? You know what I mean? My foundation's up and running. What, what have you just got to say now? And then I still see people talking shit who haven't got a clue. You know what I mean? I also am going to have a help of men's mental health charities, you know what I mean? That's a, another big thing to me. Talking about um, Jared there, he's got such a crazy life story, you know, pronounced legally dead for two minutes. It's something that I'm sure you must be thinking, God, this, this guy's got a crazy story. What's your thoughts on, you know, his background and the things that he's had to come through? As I say, he's such an inspirational character because he's come through all sorts, you know what I mean? You couldn't even name all the things that he's come through and now he's back. He's back and he's fighting in the UFC and he's, he's setting a good example for people in that walk of life. And I can't take my hat off to him enough, lad. I respect him so much as a human being. Personality aside, uh, what do you make of Patty as a, as a martial artist? I mean, like, there seems to be some debate. It's just how good he really is. Knowing that you've been watching him since his Cage Warriors days, what do you make of him as a martial artist? Uh, I think he's dangerous. I think he's uh, unpredictable. And I think that he's got a lot of tricks up his sleeves. And he's a good grappler, and uh, that was his base. But he goes for it standing. He kicks. He th flying knees. He, you know, big punches. Uh, and this is MMA. You know, this isn't boxing. This isn't, um, you know, kickboxing. There's so many variables that, you know, I'll spar with amateurs, and I'm like, why am I getting my ass kicked right now? So I'm looking at it like this is the best fighter that I've ever fought, and I'm not looking past him whatsoever. Do you think his grappling stacks up with the guys you've just faced? I mean, you faced a couple high-level grapplers in a row. I mean, listen, he's tricky. He does more, like, you know, dynamic movements, like flying arm bars, flying triangles. Uh, he takes the back really well also. Um, do I think he's necessarily as solid as a grappler as, say, Grant Dawson or Joe Selecki? I don't know. I guess I'll find out <laughs> Saturday night. Uh, but I'm ready for it. And, uh, you know, people, like, I'm not subbing guys constantly, so people are like, oh, he's, you know, he's just a positional guy. But, like, you know, I think that my grappling is up there with all those guys. So, you know, fight's a fight, and I just got to be the man that shows up that night. Last thing for me, you know, a big win for you here. I'm just curious where you think this puts you, right? Because it's not really about, like, a ranking or a position, but it's obviously a huge opportunity and a lot of eyeballs. So where do you see yourself going with the victory here? I think it gets me a shot at the top 15, at least, you know. Um, but you know how the sport is, man. One, look, I mean, three fights and you're champion. Like, look at uh, Jiri, right? He had three fights, right, or four fights, and he was – so, like, you know, who's to say? Who's really making those rankings anyways? You know, so uh, I'm not really worried about that, but obviously I want to climb the ladder, and, you know, that's what I'm going to do. I want to ask, uh, when you went to uh, Conor McGregor's pub, you had a massive, massive food binge and you had a FaceTime with him. I know he helped you out with the bill. How much was, what, did he spend all the money on the bill for you? Did he pay it all? Yeah, he paid it all, lad. Are we talking 100 quid, 200 quid? We didn't even see it. We, we didn't see the bill. He just said, I'm taking care of it. But I was eating and Molly was drinking, lad, so you can imagine how much it was. <laughs>
And finally from me, uh, it's a touchy subject, but we spoke to Molly about it. She addressed this. I wanted to ask um, your doctor, I'm not sure how much you work with him. Dr. Usman Sajjad was in the UK news a lot before the Conor Ben fight. Uh, he, you were listed on his website and you took pictures with him. I just wanted to ask your relationship with him. So has um, you took a picture with someone? Uh, what's, how, have you worked with him for this fight? Have you worked no. with him before? I don't, I've never worked with him. He took me to get an MRI scan once. Is that all right? Or is that... Just wanted to ask you. Yeah. Tiff for asking that question, like... Patty, to your right. Uh, over here. Just wanted to ask you, you know, as you get higher in, in the UFC and you get more notoriety, you become kind of like the Super Bowl, the, the big fight for everybody. So that creates a little extra burden on you, right? You have to raise your game each time because you know you're going to get the best from other guys. Is that something that you're aware of that you've dealt with in the past in your career? Yeah, people step up when they, wanna, when they fight me, you know what I mean? They come in the best they've ever looked. It's just like when football teams play Liverpool, lad. They roll over for Man City and let them beat them. But when they play Liverpool, like they, uh, they turn up on the day and play the best they've ever played. That's what people do against me. I get the best version of everyone. And, and so when you do get the best version of everyone, does that force you to like never take a day off? Like sometimes, you know, you don't feel like practicing, but because of that, because you know the guys you're going to fighting are going to be stepping up and giving you your best, does that require you to be on point all the time? There's a lot of days I don't want to get out of bed, lad. <laughs> a lot of days I want to just stay in the pit and not get out of bed. But it's something I've got to do. I work my ass off to be in this position that I'm in. Years ago, I never. I used to just rely on my talent, and I never used to work hard. And it got me to a world title. It got me to a cage warriors world title. But when I started coming up against people that were working hard and did have a bit of talent, also they were pumping themselves full of steroids, but I started to lose, you know what I mean? And then looking back now, I needed them life lessons. It wasn't just like lessons in the cage. What I needed, I needed as a life lesson to sort my life out. And I'd done that. And now look at me.